Namaskar. Today, let's talk about using notes in your classes or for your practical exam. If you're in my program or if you're in somebody else's program, generally speaking, the use of notes is not going to be looked at fondly. Somebody who's using notes is probably taking a good 10 points off of their grade just by using those notes because the practical exam is not an open book exam. Adding to this, when is it acceptable to use notes? If you're going to give a reading at the opening of class, it's going to be something from the Yoga Sutras. If you're going to reading, give a reading at the end of the class, and it's going to be a reading from something else. It could be a reading. It doesn't necessarily have to be a reading from a yoga scripture at all. It could be something that you find relevant to the theme of the entire class. The point being that when we start to think about reading things to our students, the lesson plan shouldn't be one of them. Now, if you start to think about where should the lesson plan come into play and where should the notes come into play. The notes should be something that you have worked out in off class time before you teach the class. You might want to build a custom lesson plan that you can remember. Some training schools will say you have to teach this lesson plan and they'll give you a list of postures to go over. Some of them, like for example our own program, you design a lesson plan yourself, you learn how to design a lesson plan yourself, one that you can build and you can remember, and from that what happens is it's easier for you to remember your own lesson plan that you created. It's also good because later on as you teach, no matter which style of yoga you teach from, who wants to be a parrot? Nobody wants to be a parrot. Everyone wants to be able to create on their own. It's like I've said many times, yoga teachers are like musicians. You create and you have the ability to create, but you should also have the basics. The basics being that you're working the entire body, mind, emotional state, for complete balance. Sometimes some people will address the spine primarily. That's a good reference point. If someone wants to focus on the spine and they say, well, forward, backward, sideways, and twists, and then I'll work the rest of my lesson plan around that, that's fine. Because this way, at least they saw it from a physical point of view, there's any number of possibilities in how to integrate pranayama whether it's at the beginning, the ending, mixed, in between. I have certain students that love to have pranayama broken up at certain points and really appreciate that instead of us, for example, doing a half hour straight of pranayama. It all depends on you and it also depends on your students how they react to your classes. This is how you build your own classes. One last point. And it's about the notes. Would you study from a yoga teacher who is teaching you out of a book? That's something for you to think about. Would you sit down in a class, or in how many classes, if you're very tolerant, how many classes would you continue to take if they opened it up and we did chapter one this week, we did chapter two next week, chapter three? How long do you want to study from a teacher who reads directly out of a book, the lesson plan is out of a book. Not very long. Most people won't because they feel that that teacher is not professional. In order for you to have a professional appearance, when you teach your classes, one thing, have the lesson plan in here. If you have to do rote exercises where you write your lesson plan down where you have to actually take a pen and write your sequence down. It doesn't matter. Eventually that sequence becomes part of you anyway. Then later on 
you can expand and go off in different directions. In the beginning, when you're first learning to teach, I think it's basics first, creativity later. With all that said, I want to wish all of you a very nice week. Have a wonderful day. Om Shanti.